Davis is a diesel engine who works for the quarry company shunting trucks in their sidings. She has six small wheels hidden by side plates just like Toby's. Hello and welcome to this episode of Trash to Track. In this episode I'm going to be looking at this Mavis Thomas and Friends model by Backman. Um, looking at her, she's not in too bad condition. There's some wear on the transfers on the side. But the biggest problem with this model is it doesn't work. Um, it was bought by a friend of mine um, off eBay, but it's not running at all. There's no signs of life. You can nudge her along and she'll go backwards. But there's a funny smell um, coming from her and it's just not working at all reasonably for what you'd expect for a model like this. So it's also quite dirty. So getting a cotton bud and some warm soapy water, I'm just going to give the body shell a quick clean. And you can see on that cotton bud, there's quite a bit of dirt and dust on this model. So we're going to start by doing the uh, cleaning up the body shell. I also clean the cab roof and the bonnet roof, but there's an awful lot of dirt on this model. And another thing I've noticed is that the nickel plating on the wheels is all peeling off. And the wheels and under that, in that chassis are actually very dirty and oily, although it doesn't pick it up on the camera very well. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start disassembling this model. And you've got to remove these couplings. Um, otherwise you won't get the body shell off. One of the couplings is missing the hook. But when I reassemble the model, I'll put that back on the front. As uh, it's very very unusual that children play with these models um, pulling them backwards so you have to remove both of the couplings and then there are four body securing screws one in each corner so you just have to when I can uh, when I stop dropping that screwdriver you can uh, undo all four of the uh, screws and then very carefully pull the chassis out now I say very carefully because these models made by Backman have got a mechanism mechanism in them that makes the eyes move which we'll look at later on now it is quite grimy in here um there's like i said there's a funny smell and i've also got some new wheels now these wheels are actually for a toby model because backman spares uk doesn't stock any spares for mavis yet as mavis hasn't been released in the uk as a general release now the wheels are slightly different they are slightly larger than the ones in mavis but i think whoops I think um, I can get away with using these, but we're going to have a look. If not, I'm going to have to devise a different plan. They are slightly bigger, but only by a millimetre or so. So removing three screws removes the base keeper plate, which is hardwired to that wiring loom we saw at the top, which makes it incredibly difficult to remove. This was almost vacuum sealed, but then when I prized it open, it was sealed with the uh, congealed oil. Now, luckily, there's a lot of wires on the top of this, so unraveling them allows me to pull the base plate very, very gently, and it allows the wires to stretch and be able to remove these old wheels. Now, you can see there the dirt buildup on those axles. The center wheel is non powered, it's just a floating axle, it doesn't even pick up power. Power collection and drive is for the two outermost wheels. So now that the wheels are out, I'm going to get a cotton bud of mess and I'm going to start cleaning off this horrible oily film that's over everything and also get rid of all the dirt. But I mean, just look at that on that cotton bud. This is horrendously dirty. So I clean up all of the chassis, all of the uh, axle holes. There are no bearings on this model. I clear up all of the old congealed grease and oil and give it a good clean. Now the cog on the Toby wheels is different to that of Mavis's and is actually slightly larger so won't mesh with the gear train. So using this wheel puller, I'm going to remove one of the old wheels from the old axle by simply using this screw thread here. And then I'm also going to remove the original drive cog by pushing the axle down. And then the same process was repeated on the brand new Toby wheels. Now you can see here that um, the difference in cog size so the original drive cog was then threaded correctly with that lip facing inwards onto the original uh, sorry onto the new axle and was pushed in place correctly and then the new wheel was replaced onto the new um, Toby wheels and that should allow the wheels to engage with the drivetrain 
And it's also given us a new set of driving wheels that are complete with their nickel plating. Now I am just giving these uh, brand new wheels a quick clean. Sometimes new wheels can be dirty if they've been tested. So it's always worth giving them a quick clean up uh, if you get the opportunity. Now that's all been done, I'm going to add a tiny bit of grease onto the um, axle gears here. That it will spread hopefully through the drivetrain. And then I'm also going to apply a very small amount of oil to the axles as they sit in that die cast chassis and need some lubrication as there's no proper bearings on this model. I do find this pin dropper a very easy tool to use when uh, applying oil to the axles. So now the um, wheels have been replaced and as I said the 2mm discrepancy in wheel size um, hasn't really made any difference. I'm going to reattach the base keeper plate and uh, making sure I don't bend any of those four pickups. So they are put in place and then the wires that we pulled through are gently pulled back uh, each side of the motor. And then I'm going to give the model a test. Now when I tested the model it still didn't work and that little PCB you can see on the top there was getting extremely hot so I've stripped it down again took the base off wheels off undone a screw and this has released this um, the drivetrain part of the chassis and I'm gonna try and remove this motor because I've got a feeling the motor is on the way out on this model which will make all the other work defunct because if it's not got a working motor there's no point so I remove the wires, they are simple, you remove these black clips and they are just threaded through and make contact with the PCB. So I pull the uh, pickup wires out through the bottom and then three screws are removed to allow the motor housing to be split into its two halves. Now when I took this apart, um, I was absolutely astonished at the amount of cogs in here for the drivetrain and eye mechanism. It is a very complex piece of kit, more complex than I ever imagined for what is in reality a model aimed at the children's market. Now when I went to test the motor with the battery, it spun, but it, you can't see it on camera, but it was emitting a lot of white smoke, and it was very intermittent runner, and I thought the motor had had it. I'm not going to be able to get a spare, so this model may have to go back onto the to-do list. But what I did was I got the WD-40 contact cleaner and squirted it into the brush, um, onto the commutator there, and into the coils. And the sheer amount of black oily residue that dropped out of this was horrendous. And now you can see I'm putting some power to it and the motor is now running lovely. So this model has been over oiled in the past and the oil had found its way into the motor. Which luckily was cleaned out by the contact cleaner and now the motor is running nice. So I'm hoping by reassembling this, and I'm doing it very gently because I don't want any of those gears to fall out. Um, and the grease in here was actually still nice and soft so I left it as it was. But I just topped it up with a tiny piece on the worms of the motor as they were quite dry but I didn't want to disturb any of those gears because I didn't fancy a complex rebuilding so reassembling it the motor wires have to go through the holes in the um, cast sides of the well, gearbox I suppose you'd call it and then the three screws were re, uh, reassembled re-tightened and it was at this point that the magnetism on my screwdriver decided that it was not going to work so in a minute I have to get a magnet and attach it to the shaft of the screwdriver then the base plate was put in the picket wires were threaded through and the base plate will only go in one way um, it's like the base of the chassis that holds the wheels and then the base keeper plate is there as well so it was all reassembled the wheels were put back in I'm just showing you here this is the uh, this is when I start having trouble with the screwdriver but it's all, all screwed in and most of the screws are the same size so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. And as I said before, these wires, you push them through little tabs in this PCB and the black clip uh, bends the wires over and makes contact with the PCB so it all works. So now I'm putting power directly to the pickups and you can see both motor cogs are turning in the bottom of the chassis there. So now I'm going to start uh, reassembling it and everything seems to be working nicely. Whereas before, obviously it wasn't picking up any power and wouldn't run. But now you can see that the chassis is actually running very, very nicely. So it was just a build-up of oil and dirt in that motor. 
I'm going to start building up the eye mechanism. Now this black slider part fits on first and this white retainer sits on top and actually sits on a lug that's die cast into the chassis block. And then there's a small screw that goes over the top. Now this white thing retains that black eye slot piece and that actually rotates in a cam gear that you can see there making the eyes move side to side as the model runs along which is a very neat design it's more animated than the old hornby thomas and friends used to be i'm just testing it there to make sure it's turning okay which it is and now it's time to refit the body shell you'll notice that i've unclipped the face um, from mavis to do this it is so much easier to do it without the face in place because you don't want to snap the stalks on the back of the movable eyes but I'll show you that in a second I'm just twisting all those wires back up there so that it all fits in the body shell nice and neat the uh, the um, chassis is then reattached to the body shell using the four screws we removed earlier and then the couplings are also then put back in and as I said I'm going to put the one without the coupling hook on the front as the rear coupling with the hook will be used uh, for the majority of the time, I would imagine. Now, one thing about these coupling uh, screws, these you've got to be careful with these, because I did find on this model at least, that the shafts for the screws were starting to split. So you've got to do these up very gently. If you over tighten these, it will split them, and then you won't have any way of securing the couplings uh, to the model. So now that the couplings are back in place, or at least they will be very shortly, we'll turn our attention to the face. Now, as I said, you've got to get the face on correctly, and there are two stalks on the eyes that sit in those two cutouts of the mechanism. Now, here's Mavis's face, and there's a couple of scratches on it there, and you can see the moving eyes, a bit like the old, uh, bit like the old eagle-eyed action men of the uh, past. So you've got to line the stalks up correctly with those two cutouts. Now, this isn't the easiest thing to do by any means, but it's easier than trying to manipulate the chassis around them when you're putting the body shell on because they have a tendency to move, which they're doing here. You see, I've not hardly touched that and it's moved already. But once they are in alignment with the two cutouts, there are two clips on either side of the face which then need to be gently pushed in and the face will clip on now i, I do know you see it keeps moving this isn't easy at all but i do know from experience that these faces will clip on and the eye mechanism won't be engaged it will just fold it fold it one way or the other and you end up with a boss eyed loco which uh that's been no kid wants to play with <laughs> so once that's in and with the aid of a small screwdriver, just to clip that round the aperture there, I'm just checking to make sure the eyes are still level. That just clips in place, and Mavis's face is now back where it should. So I'm going to put her back on the track to make sure the eyes are working and everything's still as it should be. And now she's running lovely. And on the rolling road, you can see now that that eye mechanism is working just as it should. And that, that indeed, she's running really nicely compared to what we started with. Uh, about 15 minutes ago so it was just a case of um this model has been used a lot obviously because it had worn all the plating off the wheels it had been over lubricated and the dirt had just built up stopping her running so that's mavis all restored i might have to try and get one of these to convert back into a whiz beach and upworld tramway diesel although that big chassis and those solid windows on the cab may prove to be uh, quite a difficult conversion but she's a good looking model and is screen accurate for thomas and friends if you've got an engine you'd like to see featured on a future episode of trash to track please email me at dansmodelrailways at gmail.com we'll have a look at getting it sent over and it might feature in an episode all of its own so i'll leave you now with mavis pulling some of the cavalix hoppers around trains for use test layout on a test run before she goes back to her owner Thanks again for watching Trash to Track. Please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.
She took the trucks to the sheds and scuttled home to the quarry as quickly as she could. <laughs> 